Hello, welcome back. This is Ryan Womack, Data Librarian at Rutgers University Libraries. This is the series on machine learning with R using Amarel. In the first part, we looked at the Amarel specific details of how to connect to Amarel. And in this part, I'm going to, or this and the subsequent parts, we are going to run through an example uh, working with uh, a large -ish data set and uh, how to handle data at that scale, how to merge, uh, how to filter our files, uh, and then we're going to talk about some machine learning techniques. This is not a, you know, a comprehensive or detailed uh, session on machine learning, but it is an introduction to try to get you started, give you some things to think about in that direction. So with that said, I'll just jump in, and I did a run-through of this earlier uh, that I where I tried to do everything live in the video um, I found that due to the size of the files uh, my audio was having trouble keeping up uh, you know when my system ran out of memory uh, working on files my audio began to drop and so I'm going to pause a bit more frequently than I normally would um, and talk about some things that will run in the background uh, to try to make this a more compact video series and one that will hopefully function better for you. Um, so I'm using the file amarel.r. So we are working from the GitHub link that is in the uh, in the page description. That's just https slash slash github.com Ryan data slash Amarel capital R. Uh, if you go there, you'll get links to these other other um, places that I'll be referring to. And so just leave that up on the screen for just a moment. Um, that's also in the this descriptive link. So the links here talk about OARC and connecting to Amarel. For this session, we're going to we're not going to be running on Amarel. We're running on my home machine, which is not hooked up to Amarel, um, so that we can have a clean uh, focus on the code and not worry about some of the um, Amarel specific details. It's a bit tricky to do all of that um, and record at the same time. At least the way I have my setup, so. Um, this code could be run on Amarel, uh, and we you could use the tools that are available there to do it, but we are not going to do that for this session. So we are going to focus on this New York City parking tickets database, which is available from Kaggle. Kaggle, a very popular um, site for data science um, activity including some contests, uh, some sh shared um, code competitions, things like that. And you can go to Kaggle, you can find a lot of different data that's been uploaded. A lot of it has notes or discussion um, there. And you will have to create an account to sign in and download the data, but um, that's a pretty easy step. Uh, I would caution you, you know, the, the data on Kaggle, a lot of it is great. It is user uploaded. It, you know, it's not an official source for anything. So, for example, you may, if you were really interested in what's going on in New York City today, you'd want to go and, and locate the official source from the New York City Department of Finance, look for updated files, things like that. Um, people typically upload something here for Kaggle for a project and it's frozen in time. It might not be that complete. Uh, the documentation for this particular data set is not that complete um, online here. Um, and we'll, we'll be discussing that just a bit. So there are four files, uh, one for each fiscal year ending in 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017. So our code is going to merge those files together. Each individual file is about two gigabytes. And we're going to merge them together into one eight gigabyte file. So preliminaries, um, I am just going to load all of these um, R packages with the library command 
Um, if you don't have any of these, which you might not if you're doing this for the first time, you will have to run through and install them. Uh, but in the interest of time, I'm skipping that step. I've already installed these packages on my R system. And in my case, um, I have moved these uh, data sets to my local home directory. So for a little while, I'm going to set my home directory to, to that. On the Amarel cluster, um, these data are available to you if you were to set your directory to, just make a note of this in the code, it's in the scratch directory. And I've made them publicly accessible so that you can uh, if you'd like to work with this data on Amarel, you could just use them directly from there without having to download them from Kaggle. So if you're working on Amarel, change that working directory. If you're working on your own computer, change it to your own local directory wherever you have the data. Now this is where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk through this a bit and I'm going to wave my hands around uh, because when I actually load these files, uh, this is where I found it was it was messing with the audio so uh, when my memory got full. I'm now actually working with, with a completely fresh start, a rebooted computer um, to deal with maybe some of those memory issues. I have 32 gigabytes of memory on this machine. It's enough to complete the um, analysis, but it seems like when I'm trying to run something else at the same time, like the screencast um, has some unwanted side effects. So. Uh, I'm going to talk about this, um, these steps. In particular, if you're on Amarel, um, you would need to install these three packages just to get through the sort of data merging step. Um, and again, I'm, I'm just going to add some notes here as we go through. Um, so. What you can do when you're working with this data on your own is you can compare what happens when you load the data via uh, different approaches. So there's the standard R read CSV command. And if you read these in, you'll find that for these two gigabyte files, it actually is fairly successful, but it's um, maybe takes about 60 seconds per file uh, to read those in. When we try to use the tidyverse's read underscore CSV command and load the data into a tibble format, the load is a bit slower, but it still completes. It's it's all right. Um, it's I would I would call it you know a little bit annoyingly sluggish at this this scale. Uh, but the the package that is the most useful for big data. Um, and when I think that's probably the case for anything that's like a gigabyte and larger, you start to notice this sort of ease in performance is the data table package. And that has a command called fread to read data in. And I'm just going to run one of these right now live. Um, and the rest I'm going to um, do some hand waving over off camera. Uh, you can see that the fread package has a nice progress bar, uh, the, which, which will tell you how much how, how the loading is going. That's good, especially when the file is large to see that, yes, something is happening. Um, we can see that our memory um, bar is starting to increase rapidly uh, as we, we load these files in. And you'll see that it loads, and then it takes a moment to um, actually populate in the global environment in the top right. So everything about handling these larger files reminds you that there is you know these steps behind the scenes where things are being moved around from block of memory to block of memory. Um, so in order to merge this data I'm going to load all four of the yearly files. When I examine the data I notice that uh, 2017 has fewer variables than the first three. So I want to compare all four years. So I, I'm going to throw out the 
of extra variables on the first three years. So I'm only keeping columns 1 to 43. And then there are three um, variables that have some missing data. Uh, they're just um, not easily comparable across all the years. So I did spend some time examining the data that I'm not showing in the video here. Um, and I'm just removing those three um, three variables, just with a very basic, almost primitive kind of remove column number command. So because these are large files, I'm then going to merge the data in two stages. Uh, I'm merging 2014 and 2015 together to create a four gigabyte file. Then I'm saving some memory by removing those two gigabyte individual year objects from the workspace. Then I'm going to merge 16 and 17 together, remove the one year files, and finally merge together each of the four gigabyte files to create one eight gigabyte file. And uh, then remove all of my sort of st other steps along the way. So I just have one eight gigabyte file sitting in my in my memory. Um, so I'm going to do that off camera so that we can um, hopefully avoid the recording issues that I experienced before. And so I'm going to break the video here and come back once that step is complete.